All right. It's 7 o'clock. Uh, my name is Rebecca Bench. I'm the chair of the Hatfield School Committee, and I am calling this meeting to order. Um, the first item on our agenda is public comment. John? Yeah, if you could just sit there so we can hear you with the microphone. So uh, my comment is basically about the um, viewing format. I sent a letter earlier. I drew the lucky straw of being union co-president this year, so that is <laughs> why I sent the email. Um, but basically the idea, you know, I appreciate, uh, that's why I was asking John if this is going to be live stream on YouTube, because it would, you know, last meeting was this hybrid format that I thought worked really well. I know, you know, people were able to call in and make comments, and that's great. Um, I don't want to just reiterate the email I sent you, because I'm sure you guys have probably had a chance to read it, but, you know, there's a lot of people that don't live in Hatfield, and there's a lot of people that don't get HCTV, which is why it's fabulous that it's streamed live via YouTube, because that's a much more accessible format. And so I, I was looking at the open meeting. It'll uh, be posted after the fact, too. Yeah, and so that's, it's awesome, but the ability to make a comment in person, you know, like I look behind me and there are four chairs, you know, and so there's, there were hundreds of people, which for you guys, I have no doubt was incredibly stressful during last year's um, pandemic, frankly, you know, and, you know, my risk tolerance is fairly high. I'm sitting here without a mask. You know, I trust that you all have been vaccinated, but I'm sure there are plenty of members of the community that don't, you know, they're a little more cautious. But beyond that, it's just good policy to be as open and transparent as possible. And so I was disappointed to see kind of I don't know if there was a debate about it or what the decision-making process was, but that there wasn't going to be that continuation of the hybrid format. And so I would love for you folks to consider, you know, just remembering that the community is larger than people that live within a short distance of the town hall, you know? And so that's really what the public comment I want to make is, is it's, it's good for democracy, it's good for the community, it's an opportunity to hear viewpoints that may not be heard otherwise. And, you know, I don't, I couldn't think, I thought long and hard about this, like I couldn't really think of an argument against it other than maybe some sort of technical assistance or something like that. And that would be something, you know, this is, you know, aside from any, I would, if you need help, I'd be thrilled to try to bash my head against the wall about it. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that would be willing to do the same thing. And so, you know, I just appreciate you guys listening to that point. And if there's genuinely anything I can do to help make that easier, that would be great. You know, again, like hundreds of people at a meeting is good. That's a very good thing because there are hundreds of people involved in this community. So that's my comment and thank you for hearing me. So I hope, uh, you know, in the future, there's people listening on the computer somewhere too. So thank thanks. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Any other public comment today? Okay. Um, with that, we will move along to approval of meeting minutes. Those are included in the school committee packet. And the floor is open to committee members. Well, other than my name being randomly misspelled oh, no. throughout all of them. There's a little bit of that. <laughs> You're not wrong. It's all right. Yeah. Um, the ones that are labeled Tuesday, June 30, it's actually June 29. Last set. The date is wrong. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Kathy, is the agenda front? You are correct. Is that how you spell your name? It was the twenty nine with a DT. All right, so we have a correction that it was Tuesday, June 29th on one set of minutes. Do we want to take them separately? It's up to whatever the committee would I, like. I'm happy to do either. I would entertain them together personally. Okay. Well, in order to then talk about anything else, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second. Do you want to make an edit to that date? Just have to be in the discussion. My, oh, it'll right. be with changes okay. as. All right, sure. As amended. So 
Um, so that, yeah, the date. Mm -hmm. It's minor, but on that June 29th one, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it really makes a difference. That's up to you. But at the very end, during the meeting at 1135, it was 1138. And I only say that because I had I took the minutes for the executive session, and they won't line up. <laughs> Happy to make that edit. It's only three minutes, but. Um, what was that edit? On the last page from the last from motion. Eleven thirty-five amended to be eleven thirty-eight. That's just being picky. Mm -hmm. So edit the time and the date, June 30th to the 29th, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that was all that I really had. Yeah. I, I think the tenor and flow is accurate to the meetings. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there any further discussion? All right. All in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. You, as amended. As amended, which is what you said. Yeah. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. Okay. Um, next, we have correspondence. Um, we have a couple of items of correspondence included in the packet, which directly relate to later items. Um, do you have additional correspondence to share? Yeah, yeah, <coughs> the email. I wasn't sure if people were gonna, had a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So um, we did receive um, an email from John Garrett and Audrey Weston regarding um, their desire for hybrid meetings with remote participation for public comments. So that has been presented to the school committee. All right, we shall move along to administrative reports. Great. Um, and we'll start with Mr. Michael yes, Wood. Well, thank you. So it's great to be here, um, my third day, uh, and it's uh, going well so far. Um, I've met a few of the, my new colleagues, uh, Riley and Christy in our office, and Paul Duval, our technology director. Uh, John Robert um, has been um, a great resource and a mentor these uh, past two days. He's on. Uh, his last day was yesterday, um, but he's been a great uh, resource to me and continues to be uh, today. We exchanged lots of emails as <laughs> questions arose. Uh, met the custodian at Smith Academy. I haven't been down to the elementary school. I'm waiting for Connor to return, uh, but Chris Buckland returned today uh, for a brief time, and so I met with him uh, very briefly. Um, I did have a meeting with Phil Genovese, our uh, facilities director. We went over uh, the summer plans for, uh, for items that uh, were listed by the principal uh, for both schools. Um, just for your information, uh, one of the capital projects that was approved at the town meeting um, was a, our freezer to be replaced. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be a delay uh, because of, um, actually because of Texas, uh, because of the weather that they had um, and items that go into building the freezers um, are, aren't being produced um, at the rate that they should be or could be. Um, so uh, it, there's a 12 to 16 week delay for um, getting it or placed in order and um, getting it up here. And then, then it will be a matter of scheduling, which may be a problem then too because of mm -hmm. being in school and everybody else who was delayed and so forth. So um, it, it probably won't be ready much before Christmas to even be having the conversation about uh, you know when it's going to be installed. Um, the good news is it shouldn't impact school um, to be able to do it because um, there's a way into the kitchen um, without you know we can block it off and, and they can do their work and it can be uh, it has to be all plastic off and so forth. Um, so that it shouldn't impact school that way. We will have to make uh, you know. Uh, 
something to happen for the food that's in the freezer uh, because it does work uh, and the cooler works, um, but um, it's maybe on its last leg. So there is a financial matter on, on the agenda today. Um, I break down my report into the four categories of finance facilities, personnel, and, and um, policy just to make it so that we're all kind of talking about the same topic areas. Um, and um, so, and right now the, the um, only matter is the facilities director's uh, stipend, um, which I think everybody knows about. Um, but right, the other, the big budget is in good shape right now. We haven't uh, placed that many orders. Things are in process now. Riley's busy pulling all that together. Uh, and so we're looking at that. We are going to be writing our ESSER grant uh, next week uh, with Molly, uh, the new special education director, in place. And as the principals return, I want to make sure I have their input and as many people as possible so that we can really kind of take a look at uh, the different elements that the ESSER grant is, is designed to support. Um, so that'll start next week. Um, I, as far as personnel goes, we are going to move forward with a hiring of a personnel, uh, a, excuse me, a facilities, uh, food services director. There we go. Um, and uh, so I have interviews set up for Monday uh, and or trying to. Uh, we have six candidates who applied, so hopefully they will still be interested in. Uh, and so we'll keep you posted on that. I don't have any new hires or resignations to report out at this point. Um, so that's good news uh, as far as that goes. Um, and um, I think as far as policy goes, I think we're, we're going to probably need to have, uh, we're going to have a conversation tonight about the mask uh, portion of the policy um, for the summer. Uh, and then uh, we probably need to have um, a policy subcommittee set up to talk about how we're going to entertain the, uh, the uh, startup of the school year and really kind of talk about, you know, what our plan is for supporting our, our kids and our families and our staff. So um, that will be uh, forthcoming as well. Can I ask a question on personnel? Sure. Do you know, and this may be unfair to ask you, but you've got your music tie on, so yes. that bodes well. Do you know if the jobs are posted for our music teaching positions? I, I believe they are posted. Um, I know that Mr. Buckland uh, mentioned it to me and that he is waiting to talk with Connor um, and myself next week about it. Um, so I believe it's posted. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Wood from school committee members? Thank you very much. Um, next on the agenda, we have the report from Smith Academy, followed by the report for the Hatfield Elementary School. Um, the principals were unable to join us today. Um, um, point of order. Yeah. Would you mind if we go out of order on this, given that they're not here, and hear from our student representative who is in person? Sure. We can, um, we can do that. Let's turn it over to Stormy. Not okay. to put you on the spot. No, it's okay. Um, so since it's summer, there's not a lot to report. A lot of the um, students at Smith Academy have basically just been focusing on the upcoming fall season. I know that all um, the boys soccer, girls soccer, and field hockey team have started their captain's practices run by the upperclassmen this summer. And I also know that the girls soccer program has started planning their annual play day, which is a fundraiser um, where we um, invite a bunch of teams from surrounding towns to come and we host scrimmages and have food. So we've started planning that. Um, other than that, I know uh, uh, the students interested in going to Panama, the sophomores, the seniors have started their payments. Um, and I'm pretty sure that we have all agreed on um, insurance as well as airfare. Um, other than that, I know that a lot of the students really enjoyed volunteering at the Strawberry Festival. Um, I, we had sent out a couple emails from both the student council and from Christy in the office asking for volunteers. And I know that had a good turnout, especially for the upcoming um, juniors and seniors that want to participate in National Honor Society. Um, other than that, there's not much to report. Thank you, Story. Of course, thank anything you for having me. Members have anything for Story? Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. 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 Yeah, of yeah. course. Thank you for having me. We're really glad you could be here today. Okay. Um, all right. We will carry on. Um, 
So I have written reports from uh, Principal Bucklands and Principal Driscoll, and I can read it so that the public can hear what they have to say. So I will start with Smith Academy. And this is from Chris Buckland. I'm looking forward to working with Mr. Wood, Ms. Bremner, and Dr. Driscoll this year. Thanks to Martin, John, and Michelle for their work last year. Custodial team is doing a clean of the building and reorganization of classrooms, maintaining COVID isolation room and access to PPE, anticipate more guidance on school in the fall. Extended year services started July 5th and will run through, uh, through until early August. Student schedules uploaded to portals in early August. August 20th will be new student orientation at Smith Academy from 11 to 1, 1 p.m. And weekly communication will start again in August when the school, new school year has started in Redeker. As for staffing, immediate priority for July is working as a district to replace Ms. Corwin and Mr. Morris. Ms. Baranowski is working hard on the Panama trip details over the summer. Tentative planning conversations for grade eight Washington DC trip have also started. Thanks, Chris. So I can't add much more to that. But if there are comments or questions, put them forward. <laughs> All right, um, I will now read the letter from Dr. Driscoll. <laughs> All right, um, happy July from Hatfield Elementary School. Things are looking good for next year. Last week, we began our extended year services through the special education department. It seems to be going well, and it's nice to see smiling faces in the building. We also received a grant through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to run three week-long intensive summer ac academies. Two of these will be focused on early literacy, and one will be focused on applied math skills. Last week, we finalized staffing for those academies. Earlier in the year, after surveying teachers to see who would benefit most from this kind of summer programming, we reached out to families to gauge interest. Every family that indicated interest was contacted last week with an invitation to the summer academies, and we may still have some additional slots. Chris Taggart at the Collaborative is very optimistic about our after-school program for the fall. He anticipates being able to fully staff it and run the program. In late July, families can look out for pre-registration packets again so we're able to plan. In mid-August, the actual schedule and registration info will go out to families. Pre-registered families will get first priority and then any additional slots will open on a first come first serve basis. The program won't exceed a 10 to one ratio. We are in the process of interviewing and hiring for all open positions and have a number of qualified applicants in the pool. Class lists and schedules will be solidified in the weeks of July and early August. Thank you and have a wonderful summer. Connor Driscoll. All right. I have a comment on this. I'm curious sure. as to what's going on since we have two of all of the things of all the classrooms, mm. how that's going to look because we've never had that before. The so, setup of the new with the two preschools. I think that involves us in some fashion. So, okay. Talking about locate space, space slides. like the where space the classes are going to go and how okay. it's going to work, and I, did, I know. Did he you do the walkthrough? I know, but I think we yeah, need to. We need him to come through and come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We can make sure Pretty that sure. he fills us in on all that. And I like, don't know. Has has anything started? Like renovation wise started. I'm not aware, aware of anything. Of. I know. Yeah. So I, mean, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nobody... talked, John and I talked about it, um, and, and he didn't mm -hmm. mention that, that specifically. Yeah. Okay. So well, any that. alteration to the building would have to come to a right. That's why I'm just approval asking. first. Right. Yeah. And there would be a cost that we would be seeing a warrant come through because nobody would be starting something without That's payment. True. I haven't seen that. Right. That's true. I just, it's a thing, and we mm -hmm. start school yeah. in a month. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. just curious. Um, I'd like to make a comment about. Um, the after or before and after mm -hmm. program. Um, Chris had said that we should spread the word and get people to sign up for the pre-registration to show, you know, the more people that we can get spread the word that are interested in it. Excellent. I think we've got to have something to show people would be helpful. It sounds but if, like but if we there. can get it out there and then that drum up to support, look, yeah to look for this pre-registration, <clears throat> and then when we get it, really blast it out there to make sure 
people really I think you and I have both been following some online chatter about yeah. it. We can post tonight and say, here's the update, be on the lookout. And when it comes out, we can hit it up again. Does that work? Yeah, I just want to make sure enough yeah. people are aware and mm -hmm. absolutely sign up. Because especially how he presented it, that the slots will first be filled by those that pre-registered. Mm -hmm. So if you miss the pre-registration, mm -hmm you might not get a slot. Right. So I want to make sure enough people are aware of the pre-registration in order to have their spot. Mm -hmm. So while the report here doesn't indicate it, all the conversations I've heard have been about before and after. Mm -hmm. um, it would just be good to clarify with Connor that before school care is happening as well. Yeah. Or that Chris Taggart's on looking for that too. Um, the other piece of communication I think would be helpful for families to know, in addition, as Kathy pointed out, with the pre-registration, is if there's a limit to the program. So a 10 to 1 ratio is great to know about, but, but, but I, have heard, it was. I have heard in previous, back when we looked at it months ago, we did have a limit that they had said here would be our cap. They haven't talked about it this fall in that language, so. I'm trying to remember what he said if it was like, 70. I, I know it was 70 or 75. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's in it that range. It wasn't much more than that. That was yeah, about to totally where the right. cap is. That's my memory too. But I think it would be, it would probably help be motivi motivating for people to pre-register. If they know it's If a they limited. knew there was a cap. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a point that it, we just won't have space for more kids. Chris had said that it, he felt it just didn't work well mm -hmm. with much more mm -hmm. bodies than that. Makes sense. Do committee members have any other comments or clarification they wish to seek from the principal's reports? Okay. All right. We shall move along in the agenda. So the next item that we have is our policy. Thanks, Story. Um, so as far as our policy report and discussion, tonight we would like to um, discuss policy EBC supplemental, which was our interim policies for COVID. And we will specifically discuss the section on face coverings. So you do, committee members do have a communication in their packet from Nurse Jean. I mean, I'm sorry, from John Robert regarding the DESI guidance on masking in summer programs. Um, so I am just I'm all jacked up. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> OK. So um, the floor is open to the committee to discuss um, any changes that we may want to make to this policy. Yeah. I think we can get rid of the masks, in my opinion. So the DESI guidance states masking indoors and maintaining other, and this is a quote, other health and safety guidance is not required but is encouraged, Very underlined. DESI summer guidance is in alignment with state guidance encouraging unvaccinated individuals to continue to mask. The DPH mask advisory advises unvaccinated residents to continue wearing masks in indoor settings and when they can't socially distance. Can we use that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm good with using that. We can. Mm -hmm. Which, at an elementary school, would mean that effectively indoors our kids would still be masked. It's still they, under their discretion. It does give some latitude in the DESI guidance. It says it's not required but right. encouraged. Exactly. Just like the rest of the world is right now. Um, it might be worth pointing out that the CDC continues to maintain that unvaccinated individuals should mask when indoors. But our state guidance is that it is not required, simply encouraged. So the new thing that came out the other day also said that if looking ahead to fall, that mm -hmm. if three foot distancing can be maintained, mm -hmm. then masks aren't required either. Yes, and the Paul. I am planning on having the policy subcommittee meet to further look into what we will do with the entirety of this policy as we move into the fall. Um, 
but did want to bring forward this portion in regards to our summer programs. But yes. My biggest concern is the fall and not as much the summer program. <laughs> um, I think that we need to move forward and mm -hmm. not requiring. We can certainly encourage, but I don't think we should be requiring anymore. Yeah. I think if we were to say we didn't strongly encourage now, and then for some reason needed to shift gears in the fall, it would be far easier for everyone if we stayed masked until we, we but if we said, nope, we're not gonna mask in the summer, and then in the fall needed to mask, that that is a much harder transition to make. I mean, there's only like 10 kids. <laughs> and some of, it's not gonna really affect some of them, most. Yeah, and some yeah. of them are, you know, may already, have granted a, a different um, process, and that's totally within the policy it is, as it exists. Um, well, how much longer is the summer program? It's only until uh, yeah. yeah, it's not long. It's only a, it's couple, only a couple of weeks. weeks. <laughs> yeah, I, I would just assume we stay the course with the policy. Um, and knowing that the policy subcommittee is going to meet soon mm -hmm. and, and spend our effort and time working on the fall. Mm -hmm. I think we should start now with what we expect in the fall. Mm -hmm. And so we're also, though, talking about the um, intensive summer academies, not just extended school year right. students. Correct? It'd be anything in the right. school building. Related, related to our to summer school. programs. Right. Yep. Do we know the number of students that are currently enrolled in the um, in the intensive learning academy? I don't, I don't have those numbers. I will say that other programs for the summer, kids are masked indoors. Like they're still, mm -hmm. they're going to camp, right? Wearing a mask in the bus, wearing a mask when they're inside. Not all camps are. Well, our town camp isn't. Okay, but there are <laughs> camps in the area that are. And, you know, so not seeing challenges. In the programs that. that are happening in the building this summer, are they three feet distancing? They're currently following the existing school policy. So, more than which, which, which is, includes mm -hmm. distance to the extent possible. Well, then, if they're distance, I don't see the need for the mask. Which is not to say that people couldn't absolutely right. still wear I, masks. I just, yeah. like, absolutely. And in fact, I, just, I would strongly encourage people yeah. to continue. I would, I would yeah. encourage it, but not require it. To continue. Exactly. So wear right masks. now, we, we already have a policy that allows people to, to mm -hmm. go forward and ask permission for um, a variance. Mm -hmm. And there, there is a mechanism for that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels like the policy we, policy we have strongly encourages because you actually have to take a step mm -hmm. to do something different. Um, I think that if we're going to fight this hard with like 15 kids, it scares me for the fall. No, it's it really, though. <laughs> it's, so I don't know why this has got to be complicated but that's and my I think opinion, we're specifically discussing the summer program we are I know but if this is and Desi has what concerns has, me is if it's this mm -hmm. hard for 20 right. kids but it, I, I mean, don't Desi is still putting forward I understand information for but, the fall. I understand but they I mean we're also having sort of the same mm -hmm. recommendation right now and we're trying to go against that <clears throat> I haven't heard what Jen thinks. Um, you know, I'm in the schools. I'm in the schools this summer. I, I see um, I'm out in the community, and it, you know, after, and I'm, I, it should, um, I should make it clear, I'm not in Hatfield Public Schools. I'm in another district. Um, and, you know, after hours in the community, um, a, a lot of the kids that I'm with are, are not wearing masks. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's a, 
you know, so um, I'm torn. Um, and I, it's, I, I think it's a tough decision. Um, but I would say um, I am leaning towards um, giving, giving parents the, the choice. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want your children to be in masks, they can be in masks. And if you <coughs> don't want to require it, then you don't need to require it. We've seen so many kids out playing mm -hmm. and outdoors. Outdoors, well. I mean, even in the grocery store. Going to stores, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean. They're going to restaurants. Yeah, and yeah I, I do think it's important to emphasize that we are only looking at this one section of the policy. The remainder of our mitiga mitigation strategies in the policy have not been changed at this point in the summer. Um, those things are in place. The spacing, the upgraded HVAC, stay home if you're sick, all of that. The hand sanitizing. Hand sanitizing, yes. All of that remains in place. Um, I would support giving yeah. the discretion up to the yeah. parents. I would say I'm heavily in favor of masks, but I also think it's reasonable to follow the guidance that we have been provided okay. from DESE. You know, I feel like in my coming and goings, um, professionally and privately, I mean, I, right now it feels like, right, the place to me, in my experience, the places that that individuals are masked are in schools and then in medical facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and for the experiences that I'm having everywhere else, mm -hmm. um, people are not masked. So I'm, I'm not looking to have a, a big fight, <laughs> but I, I think this is the conversation we should be having. And my only real issue with some of this is that there still is the science that says my mask protects you and your mask protects me more than my mask protecting me. Kids under 12 don't have an option of getting vaccinated yet. We're only looking at it indoors. <laughs> and where schools are different for, to me than restaurants and parks and all these other things. Because if I take my kid to the grocery store and they don't wear a mask, I don't have, I mean, in theory, I don't have to take my kid to the store. Um, if your kid is coming to school for a summer program that their teacher said they should come and do, um, and their safety is related to the safety of the kid next to them, it is the best practice for us to have everybody masked. And so I think there is a case to be made that it's different mm -hmm. than at kind of anywhere else except for a medical facility, where again, you're, you don't, you know, everybody needs to be able to go there. At the same time, those kids are at home playing together in the pool and hey. having sleepovers and all of those things. So I don't think, like, while I respect what you're saying and I hear it. Um, but those parents said okay to that. And, and th they can still say, okay, Johnny, you're wearing your mask when you go to school. <laughs> And we had, and, and I'm a part of REC, as many know, and we had lifted it when the state lifted it for sports, and there were still kids that wore masks, and it's fine, and nobody. And and I'm all for the outdoor stuff to be there, um, which a lot of you know camp time is. It's well, still a choice to be at a camp or a play date. It's not necessarily just a choice to come to school in the same way. So um, Desi's guidance for me would be the barest minimum. Um, just because we're, we're trying to teach science and best behave, like we're a school, <laughs> we're, like here is the standard. And I think the CDC guidance is relative to the conversation too. And do we know for absolute certain what the state is going to say about the fall? Not We've, yet. We haven't had. Right. I mean, they've yeah. sent out stuff that they're. But bits and pieces, but also, it's not. Also, prevalence rates are really low right now. Right. Yeah. And I think you a know, lot will have. It will I think we all know it's evolving. The data <laughs> yeah. Comes in August. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, if the but our local, our local levels are so low that right. I don't 
feel like it's not even a thing. Yeah, that big of a, a risk, and those that want to still can wear masks. Exactly. I think that guidance, the way this paragraph is written, is just right. It's not required, but encouraged. And if we send that message out to our parents, it's in their hands. Okay. Well, if anyone would like to make a motion to, I mean, we could <coughs> choose to strike what we currently have and replace with the DESI guidance for summer programs, or we can do it I'll however make that motion. committee members would like. To, uh, as you just said, strike our portion and replace it with the guidance from Desi that we received. So you're striking our guidance on maps. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any further discussion on this topic? All right, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -mm. Okay. Nay. All right, the motion passes. Okay, moving to the next item in our agenda um, is the budget. So uh, Mr. Wood did allude to this previously. Um, the school committee members have in their packet, I lost it. An email that I sent to the town finance committee and to the town administrator regarding um, uh, the payment to a facilities manager. Um, so I guess I can speak to that a little bit. You want me to? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so essentially, the, in the past, the school has paid $12,000 towards the salary of the facilities manager for assistance with that in our buildings. Um, in this year's budget, that money was eliminated. However, um, in conversations with the town, <coughs> it, was, it was clear that um, that had not been communicated clearly with the town as intended. And so what, after my conversations with John Robert, I did reach out to finance and to the town administrator, um, stating that we believe that we can continue to fund that amount um, out of our school choice money. Um, this is something that is actually in the contract of the DPW director um, and it in the school committee in, or the school budget involvement in that is written into the current contract that exists so as I said when I talked to John it that has traditionally been funded out of the school choice money we did accept some additional students into school choice this year and after speaking with John Robert we do feel that uh, he felt that we would be able to continue to fund that money. Um, do you have anything to add? No, just that it, it's, it, it is in his contract. It's in his contract. Um, I think that it's been funded uh, mm -hmm. for a number of years this way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was just a, maybe a, a- And we actively utilize the services. We absolutely do. Uh, I think it was just a, you know, some where the communication broke down in terms mm -hmm. of maybe a change in his contract, that it was so explicit in there. Mm. Um, and. It's actually part of his salary now, so we're we're a funding source to his complete salary. It always yeah. was that way. Yeah, yeah, and, and it really saved us many times over the years. <laughs> mm -hmm. That yeah. was, I mean, it's a bargain because no, previous superintendents had to field calls yeah. from, you know, the plumber, the electrician, right. from this, from that, and organizing and trying to be experts on boilers and mm -hmm. having somebody to call and say, would you take care of that really worked out well. Yeah. Um, so I've always felt that it was a bargain mm -hmm. to have that available to us. 
So I, let's see, you're gonna need a motion to appropriate $12,000 mm -hmm. from the budget. Yep. So I would like to make a motion to appropriate 12,000 from our school budget um, to go to the facilities manager. You need to say that it was from school choice? Yes. From school choice funds. I'll yes. second. Okay. All right, any further oh, discussion no. regarding this? Fine. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the motion passes unanimously. Okay, so um, as far as the rest of the agenda, I would just like to say, first of all, that I will be tabling item seven, superintendent year end evaluation, and I will also be tabling number nine, executive session, um, because I don't have a need for it tonight. So we'll be tabling those two items. Um, the next item on the agenda, social justice and equity, is something that we have committed to having as a standing agenda item. Um, I did discuss this with Mr. Wood um, early this week, and um, we discussed ways that we could move this agenda item forward. Did you have anything you'd yeah, like to bring out? Say, you know, it, it, this is a critical area, I think, for all schools um, that we should be talking about inclusion for all kids and that our, our, our schools are for all kids um, and for all of our staff uh, and parents as well to feel included. Um, so I think we need to look at a number of different ways that we currently do that and feel comfortable that we're doing it. Um, but also, in, um, you know, if there are ways where we see that we're not doing it, how to how to make um, changes uh, to our practice and our protocols so that we, we can make uh, sure that all feel, all feel included. Um, this would be part, you know, I think part of our ESSER conversation will definitely lend itself to it uh, because there there's, uh, you know, cross-section of, of uh, funding source uh, from that uh, for activities that we might want to do. Um, so, um, you know, I think uh, there is a, a um, DESI-promoted um, free PD that uh, the principals are aware of that they're going to be pushing out to their staff that um, staff can take advantage of, but also they're going to be taking advantage of um, so that, um, you know, they can begin to percolate ideas about ways that we can be thinking about it. Um, and again, it's, it's really trying to frame what we currently do to make sure that we're understanding what inclusion looks like, uh, because I think when people hear about inclusion or diversity, um, they think one way, uh, you know, I was just reading today, um, you know, one colleague uh, talked about it in terms of, uh, you know, we, we don't have special education students, we have gen ed students who receive and are supported through special education. You know, that's, that's kind of the lens that I think about it, you know, we have to be thinking about what do people need to make sure that they can be included. Um, and, you know, it's, it's everything from race uh, to ethnic, religious, uh, educational um, experiences, and we need to make sure that we have um, conversations that open people's ideas and minds around um, the language they use uh, and the practices that we, that we have. Um, so I'm looking forward to learning, you know, what people think um, uh, we already do uh, for inclusion, and I'm sure our teaching staff, um, you know, have lots of ideas about ways to feel included. Do we know what we're, I, this is kind of hard without the principals here, <laughs> to tell us what we're currently doing in both of the buildings? Um, and I guess this is as good time as any. I am concerned that we're pushing um, political views and not teaching mm -hmm. what we should, you know, I just, I've heard of some things that's happened this year and it doesn't set well with me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, or this past year, I should say. Um, so I think, in my opinion, we need to dial it back more than dial it up. Um, I don't know what anybody else's thoughts are, and I, I wanna hear what the principals are doing in their mm -hmm. buildings, but I'm not really yeah. sure. Can we get an update maybe for our next meeting on what mm -hmm. they're doing in their buildings? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that this is a really central 
important topic that I'm happy that we've you know committed to put forward and um, I think that we can all agree that creating a district that is welcoming to all of our students and all of our families in every way is very important and I I mean, I do think that sometimes that's a hard look at ourselves, um, but I'm, you know, I'm happy that we're talking about it and thinking about what we can do. So, right. Anything else on this topic? Anybody? Okay. So um, we'll continue to look for updates as we move towards the next school year and. Um, continue to discuss ways that we as a committee um, can ensure that we are providing an equitable environment. Um, all right, so before adjournment, the last item that we have <laughs> remaining is other items requiring school committee action. So I put this here just to <laughs> see if there were school committee members who had anything that you know, we are not going to have heavy discussion or vote on any of these things, but anything that needs to be put forward for future agendas or anything else that you feel requires our attention. It's something that kind of circles back to Mr. Woods' report when mm -hmm. he mentioned about having um, hiring a food service director and having the candidates. Does that mean we've decided to go ahead with having our own food service and not contracting out? So. I would say no. Um, we did not get anybody to respond to the RFP, is my understanding. Um, to contracting. For contracting. Yes. However, I did reach out to area superintendents because that specific activity didn't get done. Um, so I did that um, just to see. And I, I did hear back from three out of five that I reached out to. Um, and they, they uh, two, two of those three said no for this year uh, or no. Um, one said that they have... Um, an outside vendor already, and it wouldn't. Their contract wouldn't allow them to take us on, um, but um, you know, it might be something that we can have a conversation of in the future, um, if it were at a different time of the year. I think um, so. But if you're interviewing for food service director, does that mean you're going to try to go forward with providing our only own if food? there's a viable candidate? I mean, okay. it, it's a unique position, and it's it's not just somebody who's run a restaurant. I don't right. think you know it's got to have somebody who we has, tried that once. Yeah, um, so <laughs> it really has to be somebody that <laughs> understands the the um, the program um, and how it's supposed to work, and the funding mechanisms and the reporting, uh, which mm -hmm. is key. Um, so, you know, it's it's not. It's not a definite that we'll have a viable candidate out of the pool. And if you right. have a viable candidate, there's certainly enough time to order food and get things up and running to start at the end of August? I think so. <laughs> um, I, I, I think so. I think if we could but, get them on board in the, you know, by the start of August, um, okay. I think so. But they know how, how it works. Yeah, no, that was a question actually, that we talked about yesterday. I, just as a, because it came up last year, just double check the milk. So there was a collaborative milk buying agreement that mm -hmm. we Usually did, is, and yes. that happened earlier than everything else. So that might just be something to check in on. Okay. You mean you think it's already established? I think there has been a history of where that participation has been. Yep. And yeah, there was. I'm some sure kind there of some a purchasing existing thing through the collaborative. Yeah. And I don't know if it included it, the milk. The, it may be a different collaborative. It may not right. be collaborative with a capital C, <laughs> but an agreement, a milk right. fine I mean, purchase. I mean, a lot of, uh, I know French River Collaborative, for example, used to, or it does a lot of uh, uh, food service or food materials. Mm -hmm. um, so um, they may, you know, we may have purchased from them in the past and may be able to get okay. in on their bid and so forth. I, just because last year when we were looking at this, we had a food service director until the start of the year, and we were looking it out. And this was the one little point where it, it, it was whatever. It was the crux that sort of, where everything broke apart. So, okay, or or came together into a point where we had to make a choice. Okay. All right. All right. Do school committee members have anything else they'd like to put forward for now? It's really nice to have a new superintendent so on board. <laughs> I know. Thank you for coming to us and being here at your first school yeah. committee meeting. So.
Do we intend to meet uh, that last Monday in July? On, I think it's the 26th. July 26th. So we do have the space reserved. Um, should we need it? I mean, the policy is going to require it, right? Or to get yes. a couple readings in Poli before school starts? Policy committee is also going to need to meet. Um, right, I'm just saying, because mm -hmm. we have to. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's well, part of it. Months. And do you have a sense of, I know Jesse has been saying they're going to be put for, you know, they're going to be putting forward more guidance for the fall. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading their website daily yeah. uh, just to see. There was a big conference this past week, just ended or ends tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping something comes out of that. Um, right. Maybe that will. See, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not able to go, but um, right. you know, I think it'll. Yeah, and a lot of ideas are going to get discussed there, and then Desi will go back and start mm -hmm. putting pen to paper. Yeah, and you know, hope. I mean, I would love to see more guidance sooner, right. especially this, is, especially yeah. as compared no, to last right. year. Yeah. I think let's, that would be let's great. Make all our plans and then get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that would be great. So um, I think it's something we definitely need to stay on top of. Um, I don't know if I can say it this second if we have to have that meeting, um, but there may be things that we need to put forward. Yeah. In I mean, two if weeks. there's a candidate, exactly, like to then we would need move to forward. move forward doing that. So. All right. Um, All right. Hold the date. Well, you don't need a uh, school committee approval to hire food service. No, but I want to make sure you, okay. the, the yeah. issue is really. Got it. I mean, the position is is in place because I don't think you right. saw. You didn't eliminate the position from your sort of categories. Right. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Hearing no further discussion. Um, I'll motion to adjourn. Second. At seven fifty-three p.m. All in that's favor? That's the way to run a meeting. Aye. 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 Less than an hour. They're not all like that. I know. <laughs> I know.